Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Why Local and Mobile Search Matters for Home Improvement Pros. My name is Michelle Lettman and I am the content and media producer here at Surefire Local. I am also joined by our hardworking webinar ninja, Steve Eastlack, who's ready and excited to help answer your questions. Speaking of those questions, you can communicate with us using the question box in your webinar control panel, which is on the right-hand side of your screen. Why don't you go ahead and see if you can locate that right now and let us know where you're joining us from today. We'll be sending messages and discussion questions to the group throughout the webinar, so be sure to check that out later. Before we get into the directory listings, I wanted to tell you a little bit about how Surefire Local started and the story behind how the Surefire Local Marketing Cloud is the marketing solution that works as hard as you do. It all started with a small business owner who taught his son the value of hard work. That son, our founder and CEO, Chris, went on to lead several, several venture-backed web 2.0 startups, but he never forgot the memories of watching his dad get up early in the morning to track down new business. He wondered if there was a way for 21st century technology to multiply the efforts of small local companies like his father's. Turns out there was. Surefire Local started with an idea, a way to help small businesses rank higher in search engines. Then it came it, then it became an ebook that spread like wildfire through the speaking circuit. Today, it's an unbeatable marketing engine backed up by expert consultants with one mission, help local businesses generate new business by getting discovered online. Over the years, we've had the privilege of working alongside hundreds of local companies and watching many of them double and triple their leads with Surefire Local. Some call it a digital marketing transformation, but we just call it hardworking marketing for hardworking people. With all of this, you can finally focus your marketing efforts and make getting found online a sure thing. The Surefire Local Marketing Cloud works better because it works harder. Today, one lucky attendee is going to take home a Google Home. We will be announcing the winner at the end. If you don't happen to win one, though, you don't have to go home empty-handed. Everyone here today is eligible to get a Google Chromecast and a Google My Business eBook, but I will get more of that in a little bit. Today, we are joined by Yex Rev. Ciancio as he, sh as he shares the latest trends and insights into why local and mobile search matters. Rev, over to you. Hi. Thanks, Michelle. Welcome, everybody. I appreciate you tuning in today. Hopefully, you find something useful uh, from what we're going to talk about today. Um, definitely, if you have questions, enter them in, and we'll, we'll get to some of those at the end. Um, so just a, a little bit about me and so how you <laughs> ended up intersecting with me. Uh, my name is Rev Ciancio. I'm the Director of Partner Marketing at Yext. Uh, I'm a former agency owner, and I'm also a former New York City bar owner. Uh, I'm also obsessed with food, and so you're going to see a lot of food in this presentation. Um, I know that you're not hospitality markers, and this is not uh, the restaurant business, uh, but all the examples I'm going to use today are food-based, and I do that for two reasons. A, I'm looking to get you hungry for dinner, uh, and also food is something we can all relate to. So um, with that, like I said, I've, been, I've done an, uh, marketing for local businesses, I've been a local business, and now I'm here helping uh, partners like Surefire. So I've sort of sat on every side of this conversation. Uh, all right, so today we're going to talk about uh, the digital knowledge management and how it is the future of local marketing. Uh, and I've inserted a little joke there just as Siri. Uh, so we'll get to that in a second. But let's talk about digital knowledge. So what is digital knowledge? It is all the facts about your brand or business, like your name, your address, your phone number, hours of operation, your product, services, all that stuff that lives online for a customer to search. So it's probably going to be obvious when I say what is digital knowledge management. It is actually the process uh, by which you source, manage, and make your digital knowledge available to those customers in the moments that matter. So when they're out looking for any level of home improvement services, you know, what is going to get them to choose your business over another business? Um, so I want to kind of start this with a story that will sort of frame up uh, a little bit how search works. So if you know anything about me, uh, I'm kind of really well known in the food world and I'm, I'm sort of a local food blogger up here in New York City. Um, I get invited out to eat at restaurants all the time and they're hoping to get some real estate on my social media profiles. So I get invited to this restaurant in uh, Tribeca here called Macau Trading Company. And it's like a really unique Eurasian restaurant that mixes flavors of like Chinese and Portuguese. Uh, it's a great place for cocktails. It's a really good intimate conversation. It's a really, really fancy place. This is a a picture of the bar. So I get invited there for dinner one night and it's me and about 15 other you know Instagram or food blogger people and they serve us this ridiculously opulent meal with like 10 different courses and open bar you know they want to show off the talents of the chef 
you know, the culinary team, the cocktail program. And look, I had a great time. Food was awesome. Drinks were great. And I started doing the math while I was sitting there, right? And that meal probably cost about $150 a person for the restaurant to put together, right? We're talking about a $3,000 marketing tab for one night hoping that we'll put these pictures of their dumplings and octopus and cocktails and whatnot on our Instagram and drive in business to their restaurant, right? So at one point I get up from my table and I, I go and I start talking to the publicist from Macau and she introduces me to this fellow uh, and he is their head mixologist and the two of them go on for, I don't know, it felt like an hour um, about how long they, you know, how much work they put in this cocktail program and how much, you know, how much research they do and understanding their bitters program and the sourcing of cocktails. And, you know, I'm like, yes, I get it. You're a cocktail bar. Okay. <laughs> right. So I, I'm sitting there and they're going to me and he's like, Oh, here, let me give you the drinks menu. And they hand me what looks like Gideon's Bible. Now, unbeknownst to them, I'm like a whiskey neat guy. So it's sort of just lost on me and goes over my head. Uh, anyway, I, I order a bourbon um, and I, I, I reach into my pocket and I pull up my smartphone, right? I open up a Chrome and I do a quick location scan on Macau Trading Company, right? So if, if you've ever used the directory listing scanner with Surefire, you know what I'm talking about. Their listings came up as 94% inaccurate, right? So I was like, okay, wh what's going to happen if I actually search this bar, search for this bar in, in a browser? So I, I pull up a browser and I search best cocktail bar in Tribeca. Guess what's not listed in the three pack, right? So I say, okay, pull out the publicist. I have her do the same thing. She gets the same results I do, right? Now our phone knows that we are inside of Macau Trading Company, and yet it's telling us to go somewhere else. So if you see in the screen where it says 4.0 rating or higher, right above weather up. So when you use the word best in search, that's a signal to Google to only show you 4.0 or higher rated businesses, right? So I say, okay, hold on a second. Let's see if it's beyond the top three. So she clicks, we go into the top 20. Guess what is not in the top 20? Macau Trading Company. I say, okay, let's remove that 4.0 rating. Let's forget about best and let's just see if we do cocktail bar in Tribeca and if it will send us there. So we move 4.0. You could probably guess where this story is going. Macau did not even show up in it did not even show up in the top 20, right? So the point is, if you don't search for this bar by its name, you'll never find it. And I, I look at the publicist and I was like, you know, it would be significantly cheaper to take care of this problem than spending $3,000 on Instagrammers. And she just kind of looked at me in the face. But anyway, the point was, I wanted to express to you how local search works and just how easy it is to fix it when you have the right tools, right? And, and the importance. So let, let's talk about some numbers real quick. So in, I'm showing here on the screen, four out of five local searchers follow up offline with an on-store visit, or, or sorry, they follow up after a search. So if somebody searches a business, four out of five of them are going to call or purchase or visit that business, right? Three out of four internet users are performing local searches. That means only one out of four of all searches online are not for a local business, right? And the last thing there, three out of five local searches result in a purchase. And I show you these because I want you to understand that search doesn't just, it doesn't just equal intent, it equals immediate intent. When somebody is, look, is searching, they are looking for a solution. They are looking for a business. They are looking for help and they are ready to spend money. Okay. So let's talk about how we got here. So for the last 20 years, search has looked like what we see on the left of the screen, the, the 10 blue links, which the industry calls uh, organic search, right? But who's done a search recently, right? It doesn't look like that anymore. You're now getting results that look like what's on the right, and those are called structured answers, okay? And so what Google is looking for is information that they can pull from around the web to give their users an answer from the very first moment of search. So they don't have to go anywhere else. They don't have to click anywhere else. They just get name, address, phone number, services, location, driving directions, all that information that they need in the moment, right? So, and the other thing too is search these days, it's not just based on query. Like it's not just, you know, best whatever near me, right? Search now takes into effect your previous search has history. It also knows what the weather is. It also knows what your last search was. It also knows if you're on mobile or desktop. So search is getting more and more and more intelligent in every single day, right? So just to express 
what we're saying in terms of, of locality in search, right? It doesn't matter if you put the word pizza or pizza near me or pizza New York or pizza wherever into a lo local search query. If you were looking for photos of pizza or you were looking for the history of pizza or recipe of pizza, Google doesn't care. They're going to tell you where to eat your next pizza, okay? <laughs> they just believe that, you know, with the data, 75% of search out there is somebody looking for something local, right? So where does this information come from, right? Where are the search engines and the results getting this information to give the users in that moment of search? Well, it used to live on the website of the brand or your business. And so the web searchers would go out there, they would crawl your website, and they would pull out this information, and they would put it up into search, right? But that was the last 20 years. Now where does this information come from and where are people seeing it? Anybody familiar with this, this search and this logo? How about that one? Anybody in, ever ended up a result on Yelp? How about Apple Maps? So these are the intelligent services that are now delivering people the information they're looking for when they're searching for a local business, right? Here's the thing. I'm only showing you four. There are literally hundreds of these out there which people are getting information and which the search engines are taking their cues from, right? These sites are getting almost three times more views than your business website. And just to take it back to the hospitality thing for a second, restaurants, 10 times more likely. So if you go and search for the sandwich you're looking for lunch, it's 10 times more likely that you'll get to Yelp or Google and never even go to the website of that business, right? So in, in home services, these sites are three times more likely to get traffic than your own website. So keeping them updated and having your information on them is vital if you're looking to affect search, right? So all these services, they are driving phone calls, right? They're driving appointments and reservations. They're driving orders and transactions, and they're also driving driving directions. So how the, the, the problem is, you know, we're not just talking about the big guys. It's not just the Facebook and Yelps of the world. There are literally hundreds of these around the Internet from which people and search engines get their data, right? Anybody here have um, you know, Spanish-speaking customers? I'm guessing some of you do. As much as 15% of all searches in the U.S. are in Spanish, right? So if you're not on a website like Yasabe, which is taking this information and translating it into Spanish, you could be missing out on a potential huge lift in business, right? Just trying to stress the importance of make sure that your information for your company is updated on these sites. Here's the real problem. There are hundreds. There are literally hundreds. And for you to be absolutely perfectly optimized to come up and search during a moment of intent, you have to go and update every single one of them. Right? Some people say, oh, I only care about Google. And my reply to them is like, well, that's 67% of search, and that's a lot of search, but could you not use one-third more customers? Right? And people are like, oh, well, you know, I use Apple Maps. Well, that's powered by Bing. So you, know, you have to really think, like, where is your information, and what is the customer's path or journey to your business? Really? And what it really comes down to is the fine, fine points of, and differentiators in your business. You know? And here's some examples that might not necessarily appeal to, you know, home services, but like, you know, is there paid parking? Is there wheelchair access? Is there air conditioning? They want to know what credit cards are accepted. What are the hours, right? If I have to choose, if I need an emergency service and I need to know that they'll be here within 10 minutes and they offer XYZ service and they take credit cards and I can't get that answer from one vendor but another has it, I'm going to call that vendor. Right? Those are the pieces of information that are really important for you to manage and really important that, you know, to, to take that intent and search and drive business into you. Know, into you. So one, one thing to, to keep in mind here, right, how do you affect search, right? It is about structured location data, right? It, it turns out that building those great websites that has all those public facts about your locations, they just aren't that easy. It's not as simple as just putting those keywords on the website. Right? The, the, the searchers and web crawlers have to look at millions and billions of pages every single day, and they want to see the information marked up in a way in which they can read it easily and move on. So just putting it on your website is not going to get it done anymore. You have to keep constant with the changes that Google and other search engines are making to their algorithms. So we're going to take a quick break from that. Thank you, Rev. So right now we're going to do a quick poll. Um, and see if you would like our special webinar gift. You will get our Google My Business eBook and a Google Chromecast when you attend a complimentary demo of the Surefire Local Marketing Cloud. So while you're answering the poll, 
you already heard the story behind Surefire Local, but I want to get I want to dive a little bit deeper and tell you why the Surefire Local Marketing Cloud might be the right solution for you. Every time you think you're up to date on the latest best practices in digital marketing, a new platform trend or ag algorithm comes along and shakes up your search ranking. Seeing cus uh, customers, managing employees, and becoming an expert at SEO, it starts to look like you really can't do it all. Enter Surefire Local. We go way beyond SEO to centralize your entire online presence, including reviews and social media too. We multiply the impact of your online marketing efforts by helping you see and strengthen all of your online activities from a single platform so you can finally get the leads you really want. So answer the poll, say yes. I promise you won't be disappointed. And then once we finish up the poll, Brad, you can take it back over. We give everybody yeah, enough everyone. time to take the poll? Yep, yep, we did. Thank you, everyone. Awesome. All right, thank you. So let's let's talk here real quick about how Google defines search. So Google looks at search using three factors, okay? And, and, uh, and this is going to be high level. We'll break it down in a second. So they look at relevance, distance, and prominence. And those are the three things that Google is going to look at when they're trying to decide which results to display in search, okay? So let's jump into relevance quickly, right? So there's nothing more important in search than accuracy. Think about it this way. If somebody searches best tacos near me and they happen to be literally standing in front of a restaurant that offers tacos, the web crawlers will return with results that have the highest amount of instances of similar and recent data, right? So they want to make sure that Dos, ta tacos, or Dos Torres Taqueria, their address name, phone number, hours are the same on all of those you know, publisher networks that we showed you about. If the, that tells them that the information is relevant, right? It's the same thing as if you ask 10 friends how to find a pizza joint and they all give you 10 different answers, you're not going to feel really confident about that pizza joint, but you ask 10 friends and they all give you the same answer, you're going to feel much more confident. That's how relevance works in, in Google's eyes, right? So let me give you some examples because you're easy to think like, oh, you know, I'm a little business. It, it's hard for me to manage this. Well, it happens to the big guys as well, right? Is it five guys, burgers and fries? or just five guys, right? Is it Capital Grill or the Capital Grill, right? These types of mistakes are what affect relevance and search rankings all over the internet. So if you're not making sure that you're the same on all of these sites, your business is not gonna come up first in search, okay? So let's move on to an easier part, distance. This is literally how far a potential search result is from the location using the term. So if you put in remodeling companies, Google's going to assume you're talking about within, you know, a one to two mile distance of where you are, depending on, you know, the, the intensity of, you know, the geographic you happen to be. And in New York City, we get a much smaller circle. Out in the suburbs where I live, you get a much larger circle. But the point is distance is if you don't put something in search, it will assume near me. But if you put in a city or a zip code or near an address, you're telling Google this is the distance from which I want my search query, right? But let's move on to the last factor, prominence. So in April of 2016, Google came out with an announcement that said this is the third factor in search. This is how we are going to give different results based on people's queries, right? So what is prominence? In a nutshell, it means recent positive ratings and reviews, right? So they define it as a business's reputation, which includes review counting and rating. So what, what Google is really saying here, it's literally ranking your business in the local pack based on the quality and the rating of your reviews. If you are not managing your ratings or reviews, your risking business will even show up in search. Okay? So I'm going to give you a little, little example. So here are three pizza places where I live in Hoboken, New Jersey. Okay? There's Romano Pizza and they have four stars. There's Johnny Pepperoni and they have four stars. And there's Frank's Pizzeria with five stars. Now, which one are you going to go to? Well, if you look at how many reviews have been generated, you're going to go to Johnny Pepperoni with 239 reviews. Even if Frank's has five stars with only 10 reviews, you're just going to trust Johnny Pepperoni more. By the way, that's also how Search sees it. So if you're ever in Hoboken, I definitely suggest you go to Johnny Pepperoni. It is one of my favorite pizza places, uh, and I definitely recommend it much in the same way that, that Search would, right? So who out there is doing social? I assume most of you might be posting to Twitter or Facebook and Instagram. Uh, I just want to give you a, a quick, quick comparison about the difference between doing reputation management and social media. Uh, it's reported that the half light of, of a tweet can be as fast as five minutes, which means if you put up a tweet five minutes later, nobody's ever going to see it again, right? And some studies have shown that Facebook 
post has a life expectancy of about five hours. So if you update something that morning, by that afternoon, it will never be seen again. However, ratings and reviews and location data are forever and always changing. Right? Local search happens in real time. If you are spending time in your day updating social and not managing your ratings and reviews, you are doing your business a disservice. You can take it from me, I used to work on social media campaigns professionally, and I can tell you that you should drop your social activity now until you can validate the accuracy of your online data and manage your reputation. It will affect you in search. Okay, let's just talk about a couple of numbers here. You know, do you want to lose 9% of your business? Online reviews, they're a huge impact for your business. The impact can be positive or it can be negative. You know, for example, every star a business gets in their rating, their sales revenue can increase from approximately 5 to 9%, right? Everybody could use more business, right? At the same time, 22% of customers, that's more than one out of five, will not purchase a product or hire a service after reading only one negative review. If, you, if your business has a lead review of a, a one star, chances are people are just going to move on. Okay, so I got a little serious there. Let's, let's keep it a little more lighthearted. I don't want to scare you into managing your business, right? But it is true. Basically, the local business with more accurate location data across all channels with the most recent positive ratings and reviews has the best shot to come out on top of search. So, what does it all mean? We're going to go back into a story. So I did some math for, for this webinar today, and I learned that there are 8.5 million residents in New York City. That's not visitors, consumers, or tourists. That is literally just the people that live in New York, right? There's also 45,681 restaurants in New York City. Uh, something else I learned today, I wanted to have a, a Google map with all the restaurants pinned on it for New York City, uh, and I found out that there's a maximum of 500 pins for Google page. So this is, this is literally a two-mile section of New York City just to show you what the restaurant competition is like here. And, and this certainly isn't all of them. Anyway, so if you take you know, 45,000 restaurants, 8.5 million uh, residents, that's 187 people for every single restaurant in New York City. Now, I want you to be careful throwing away, throwing around that number 187. It is also the California Penal Code for murder, so just be careful how you use it. All right, so back to, back to my story. So if every single person that lives in New York City ate three meals a day, 365, years, or 365 days a year, that would total 1,095 meals. If all three of those meals were eaten at a different restaurant, one person could effectively cover 2.3% of all restaurants in New York City, right? What is the average profit margin of a meal in New York City? Five bucks, okay? The average cost of dinner in New York is $48, and the average profit margin in New York City for a restaurant is 10%. That means the perfect customer who eats 1,095 different restaurants in a year, which is literally nobody, uh, the value to a restaurant is $5 per customer, right? The point I'm trying to make here is that competition out there is tough, right? Saying it's tough would actually be an under, it would literally be an understatement. My question would be, why would a business owner then not take the time to make sure their business brand knowledge is correct anywhere that would lead somebody to walk through their door? Okay, one more story. This is my friend Ethan, all right? Ethan lives in the Gowanus neighborhood of Brooklyn. Uh, I don't know if anybody here knows anything about Gowanus, but there's a river that runs through it. It's technically a canal. Uh, and New York City has mandated that if you stick your hands into the canal, you need to wash them immediately. So anybody here, if you end up in Gowanus, please do not put your hands in the canal. I just want to put that warning out there. Anyway, so Ethan lives in Gowanus, right? But he works in Midtown East, okay? Ethan has a 60-minute commute from Brooklyn, and that includes a stop to get coffee before he gets on the F train to go to work, okay? Now, there are 20 delis and three coffee shops in Ethan neighborhood that he could potentially walk by on his way to get to get the train to get that cup of coffee, right? So when Ethan gets off in Midtown East, you can see the subway stop, that's the red arrow, right? He walks to his office, which is two blocks, which is the yellow arrow, okay? So Ethan, my, my buddy, he's into pizza. Now there are 15 places to get pizza around Ethan's train stop and office. Now you're like, that's a lot of pizza. Mm, not really for New York, it's actually pretty common here. So anyway, as Ethan's walking to work each day, he rarely walks past Second Avenue just because he goes into his office and that's where he is. Well, sadly though, the highest rated pizza places in that neighborhood are both on Second Avenue, okay? So one day, my friend Ethan gets a hankering for a good slice of pizza and he searches best pizza Midtown East. 
Now, neither Abitino's or Primavera Pizza, both of which are on Second Avenue, come up the results, right? They are the highest rated, right? But their, their data is wrong. So let's say you click to explain the list just like we did at Macau, right? Neither of them are still even in the top 20, right? Again, remember, if you put in best, Google's going to give you options rated 4.0 or higher. So let's say Ethan's not like every else, else on the planet and he's willing to click off the 4.0 filter. Guess what? Neither Abitinas or Primavera are going to come up in those results. So, you know, what are the chances that Ethan's ever going to eat at Abitinos? None. Literally none. And let me tell you something. Ethan's missing out. I've been to Abitinos. They have something called lasagna pizza. It is as good as you think it is. Uh, that's a picture from my Instagram. Um, now, I shared that pizza on my Instagram. I got almost 1,200 likes with 44 comments. That's, that's pretty good for me, right? So let's say that Ethan happened to see this picture that I put on Instagram, right? And he's like, oh, man, I need to eat that. A couple weeks go by. Ethan's like, oh, what was that, what was that lasagna pizza that Rev had? He is not going to open up Instagram, go to my profile, scroll back through weeks of photos and trying to find that pizza. What is he going to do? He's going to Google best pizza Midtown East, and we already know what that's going to get him, okay? But let's just say instead that Ethan takes it one step further, <clears throat> and he Googles lasagna pizza Midtown East. Guess what? Abitino's is still never getting a visit from Ethan. More importantly, he still does not know where to get a cup of coffee on his way to work. <laughs> okay, so where are we headed, right? Anybody recognize any of these? Siri, Google Home, Amazon Echo, right? There is a new trend. It's a wave of intelligent services that is making decisions about your business to their users, right? So Google, Bing, Apple, Amazon, they all have these intelligent agents, right? And they're making decisions about what to show those customers based on the characteristics of your business, okay? By 2020, 50% of all searches will be voice, meaning somebody's going to pick up their phone or ask their Google Home, hey, you know, they're going to ask a question. It's important then that your brand data is correct because what happens when 50% of voice search or 50% of all search is voice, right? Hey, Siri, I like, uh, I'm looking for the best lasagna in New York City, and I need a reservation at 7 p.m. It needs to be two people. I want parking, and they have to have, a, you know, wine on their menu. Siri is going to come back with one answer. Hey, Rev, House Lasagna 334 and Ave is a top-rated restaurant for lasagna near you. Shall I confirm your reservation? I don't see a list of answers. I don't see a Google pack, three-pack. I got one answer. If businesses aren't optimizing their information online by the time we are like moving toward this much level of voice search, they're going to lose out on business, okay? And we're not just talking about the voice commands. These things are, intelligent systems are coming everywhere, glasses, cars, goggles, phones, uh, you know, voice-activated services. You know, this concept, the structured facts about your brand power, powering the system, it's going to extend past just restaurants and business, events, menus, services, and certainly your company, right? It's all coming. And, and making sure that your data is correct online everywhere, you're really just future-proofing your business. Okay, I have, I, have, I have one more story for you. Okay. Take a look at the screen. Would you rather have the hamburger on the left or would you rather have the hamburger on the right? Well, it's a trick question because it's actually from the same restaurant, okay? Here's a better question. How do you think the owner would react if I showed him these two pictures of his burgers side by side? Chances are he's going to freak out on the staff member for having <clears throat> a bad and inconsistent presentation, right? But if I show him this, 47% inaccurate listings, you know, his information is wrong and different on different you know, on different uh, intelligent services out there, what is he going to say to me? He's going to brush me off. He's going to tell me that search is not important. You know, he relies on quality food and exceptional customer service and word of mouth. Well, we all know what word of mouth looks like in this day and age, right? It's a bunch of one-star reviews on Yelp and then Yelp reposting my burger photo on their own feed, okay? All right, so I've sort of scared you into making sure that you're taking care of your, your data online. Let's talk about what you can do to fix it right now. Okay, so you have a couple of options. The first one is manual updates. So this would mean you get in front of your computer when you have the time and you go to each one of these sites and not just Google and Bing and Yahoo and Facebook and you update your information on each one, right? Then you better make sure you put the same information in, name, address, phone number, deep facts about your business. Otherwise, again, you're not going to be consistent and you're not going to come up and search. So that's your first option, do it site by site, okay? 
Second option is using something called a data aggregator. The, these are sort of relatively inexpensive, but we call them hope and pray solutions uh, because there's actually no guarantee they're going to update your data on all the publisher networks. They basically take your information when you put it in, name, address, phone number, right, and they, they save it till they have a whole bunch of businesses at once because they have to pay to update them, and they update them in bulk. Okay, there is no guarantee when you're using them that, you know, Yelp, Bing, Yahoo, Google, Facebook, there's no guarantee that they're going to take that information. And even if they do, right, and some of these aggregators only push three times a year, right? So if you realize that your holiday hours are changing next week for a holiday, you can't wait three months for that update to go through. You need to go through today, right? So not only are you not guaranteed to go up, but let's say, let's say that the publisher networks take this information from the data aggregators. It's not guaranteed to stay there, right? The, the publisher networks use a round-robin system of finding data. So it could be from local records. It could be from you know, other networks. It could be from user-generated content. Anyway, you, this can help you. It's just it's not guaranteed to work, okay? So the last option you have, well, actually not, the last option is do nothing, but I'm hoping because you're on this webinar, you're not a do nothing type of business uh, person, is something that Surefire Local can do for you, right, with their local marketing cloud, and that's using some of our match and lock technology. So what this does is we have all these publisher networks that we work with where you want to make sure your brand information is correct. When you enter your information in with Surefire, they're going to take that information and they're going to put it into all of these sites all at the same time, almost immediately, and then lock it down. Okay? You will have direct control of your business information on all of these sites. So if you move or you change your area of service or you offer different services or the seasons change and you go from installing furnaces to doing air conditioning, you can go in, update that information, have it change within a day or two, and then nobody else can change it. You will have direct control through a direct API that we have with all of these sites. Okay, keep in mind, if your information is more than 10% inaccurate across the publishers, the search engines will throttle you in search. I lied, I have another story. <laughs> so I was recently in Atlanta, uh, and a friend of mine down there, his name is, is Billy Kramer, and you can check him on Instagram at Billy's Burgers hits me up and goes, dude, you're in Atlanta, let's get a burger. This is not uncommon in my life. And he says, you need to meet me at this place called Illegal Food. So I forget the name of the place, right, and I'm, I'm in between meetings, and I'm like, oh, best burger, blah, 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 whatever. And Illegal Foods never came up. Well, the good thing I had Billy, because I would have never found this restaurant had he just told me the name and I forgotten it. 75% listing inaccuracies, 51% of businesses have better reviews. And if you're looking at that burger, it was really good. It was really, really good. So I'm thankful I had a Billy. But not everybody has a Billy to lead them to your business, right? That's why you have to rely on yourself to make sure your information is correct. So when somebody needs a service like yours, they search on the Internet, and they get to your business in that moment of need. How do I sum that up? Only you can fix bad data, right? So a couple of things you should walk away from here today, right? Search engine relies on a system of accuracy and relevancy to deliver search results, right? Accuracy, super important. The local business with more accurate location data across all channels and with more recent positive ratings and reviews has the best shot to come out on top of searches. If you want to beat your competition in local search, you have to have control of your brand knowledge. It has to be correct, and you have to have recent ratings and review activity. All right, so I've sort of beat you into submission here a little bit. Hopefully it wasn't too much. We kept a little lighthearted with burgers. Um, I, I want to thank you guys for letting me talk today. I'm going to turn the mic back over here to Michelle. We'll get to questions in, in a little bit. Awesome. Thank you, Rev. Um, I'm extremely hungry now <laughs> after listening to your presentation. Um, all right, so before we move on, we have a few other things, um, including the Google Home winner. But first, I want to mention again, just in case you stepped away from your computer earlier about getting our special webinar gift, um, see how we'll get your marketing back to work with a free demo of the Surefire Local Marketing Cloud with a free Google Chromecast and a Google My Business ebook for those who attend. So we're going to take another quick pause here and do a second poll regarding our Google gift. Um, while you're answering our poll question, I do have some more information to share about the Surefire Local Marketing Cloud. I've already told you how it helps you keep track of Google Analytics, Yelp reviews, Facebook ads, the X listings, SEO keywords, email campaigns, and, and some new things no one can pronounce that just came out yesterday. 
Now I want to tell you how Surefire Local helped you sort through all of this and increase your online presence on order and in order to bring in the quality leads you need. Uh, the Surefire Local Marketing Cloud allows you to do three things. See more, do more with your digital marketing, get more help with your marketing. Uh, we call this hard work, hard working marketing. It's why in a notoriously high churn industry, people who experience our platform stay with our platform. And it's why major multi-unit organizations and thousands of local businesses across the country partner with Surefire Local. Uh, we'd love to show you how, uh, show you more specific ways that you could make your own marketing work a lot harder. So please take a second to answer the poll. Um, and we did have a few questions. Um, and while people are answering those, we can, um, or answering the poll, we'll get to that. Um, so let's see, we have one for you, Rev. Uh, best place for reviews, Google. I heard Facebook was a great place for reviews and helped ranking. Uh, so the question is, what is the best site for reviews? Yeah, um, and they were asking like if Google was one of them. Google, Google is definitely one of them. Um, the the, 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 the if you really want to own it, like if you have a, a competitor out there that it, and you are neck and neck, you would go do reviews on every single site that's relevant to your industry. But the big ones are definitely uh, Google, Facebook, Yelp, and Foursquare. Those would be the top four. Um, you know, and then again, if there's something pertinent to maybe where you live uh, or in your area, uh, you know, those would be specific. But those four would be the ones I would urge you to definitely spend time with. Awesome. And actually, the same person just asked another question, and they want to know if it's better to have reviews embedded into their website. Oh, I love you. you we should talk offline. <laughs> yes. The answer is yes times 1 billion percent. Uh, so there are two types of reviews out there. So we'll, we'll get into this real quick. There, there are what's known as third-party reviews and first-party reviews. So a third-party review would be a review that lives on another website. So Google, Facebook, Foursquare, Yelp, Right, those are third party, but first party reviews are reviews that live on your actual website and they work in the same way and they're generated in the same way that you would do on third party, but Google and the other search engines actually rank them higher. So if you have first party reviews on your website, you're going to beat out your competitor who only has third party reviews. Google will prioritize that and, and I don't remember the number off the top of my head. Um, but basically, if you have first-party reviews on your website, they will show up in the organic search rankings. Literally, they will put the stars in the blue links. And businesses that have stars in the blue links are uh, receive 321% more clicks than ones that don't. So that's a great question. First-party reviews are like, that is the secret sauce to owning local search. Great. Um, okay, cool. So we're going to close up the poll and then we'll get on to the Google Home winner. All right. So today's lucky recipient of Google Home is Michael Pudlick. Congrats, Michael. Please email marketing at surefirelocal.com with your full mailing address and we'll ship that right out to you. So again, huge thanks to Rev for joining us today and thank you to all of our attendees. Please join us for more upcoming webinars. For details on upcoming webinars and more, you can check out newly updated surefirelocal.com and we have a link at the top of our homepage for webinars. If you were napping during our poll, I'll mention one last time that we're offering a Google Chromecast and a Google My Business eBook for all the hard workers who attend a complimentary digital consultation with us. So please be sure to email marketing at surefirelocal.com if you're interested. Also, please take a minute to fill out the survey at the end and let us know how we did today and what topics you would like to hear about in the future. Um, thank you again and have a lovely afternoon.